Hey everybody, it's Fang here again with this week's uh, Design Cinema. So this is going to be a continuation of the painting that we started, or at least the design that we started about two weeks ago. Um, what we're going to do here is take um, take that drawing and do a very, very quick rendering of it. So this was again done in front of the students. So um, you're watching this in a bit of fast forward here, about uh, say about 50% uh, increase in speed. Um, the first thing I did is took a bunch of photo scrap just to get us the value as well as the texture required to uh, pursue the painting. So these are kind of just random images. Uh, they don't really have to match anything, but what you want is kind of get the feeling and the grit. Uh, it's similar to traditional painting, um, if you guys have done that before, where you kind of splash a bunch of different values on a canvas before even painting. And that material that you're putting on the canvas really has nothing to do with your uh, final result. <coughs> Excuse me, so I still have a little bit of a cough, so once in a while it's going to come in here. So you can see a bunch of reference images I have. Um, I have literally thousands and thousands of reference images that we could pull up uh, in cases like this. So what I'm doing is just kind of cropping, trying to make certain things fit. They don't have to relate again, but if you could try to relate some of it, uh, it does help. So in my mind, we have that gun turret, remember on the top, and then kind of uh, in this abandoned warehouse. So just going through a bunch of different reference materials, showing students um, how you could incorporate these kind of things into your um, painting. So again, it's not relying on the photograph for what they are. It's purely for their values. Uh, for example, this tin shed has a certain value that I like, so I want to use that. So right now, if you look at the painting, it's completely chaotic, right? It's messy, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, that's that's the whole point of it, is to, if you turn this painting right now to black and white, you have every value scale in the um, in the picture that you see here. And we could then sample those value scales for our uh, for our painting. And also keep in mind, these are done in, in front of a class, so I'm kind of doing certain, I'm trying to show certain materials uh, just to make a point for the students. So this material here is great for the vehicle that's on the lower left side of this um, drawing. So we kind of throw that in there, so it's got this kind of lighter value, this kind of rusted metal feel. So we kind of just put it in that location. So all the pieces are in play, and once that's done, we could proceed with the painting. So we call that materials, make a new layer, and now we start painting. So I use a brush, uh, just a default Photoshop brush, at about uh, about 70 or 60 percent opacity. So I don't have the opacity turned on in my uh, Wacom settings. I actually control it manually. So that's the way I like to work. So everyone has different preferences as how they paint. So for me, I don't like to have uh, opacity on. So. And what I'm doing right now is just grabbing the local values from the photo scrap underneath and painting with that. <coughs> Excuse me. And while this is going on, just to uh, remind everyone, if you're watching these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and everything. So because we do get a lot of statistics out of those um, things, um, we get a lot of uh, information on where you guys are, are uh, which country is watching these videos, uh, and that helps us uh, kind of cater these videos to the right segment of the audience. So here I am painting some shadows, right? Start to do some very early stages of value control. The end result I want from this is kind of um I guess we could call it cinematic Hollywood type of lighting where you typically see in video games <coughs> excuse me as well, which is a <coughs> dramatic type of lighting. Uh, excuse me, let me take a drink of water here. Uh, it's not extremely real. It's done in a way to create a feeling. Now, uh, if you guys play games like um, Bioshock, um, you know Fallout is a great, great, great one. Stalker, the new one that just came out. The, if you actually look at the lighting of these games, it's fairly realistic. However, the designers need to light the scene in a certain way to control the flow of the game. For example, you walk into an abandoned warehouse. If you leave it completely unlit and just let the engines or sunlight light it, the player might not know where to go. And if it's a storytelling point, you, uh, what they do is they typically throw a secondary light source uh, into the into the even if it's abandoned warehouse that has no nobody living in it, you'll have some blue light coming coming off from a corner or a little bit of a, a shiny spot on the floor here or there to kind of direct their, direct the um, the gamer's eye into certain locations and uh, the tendency is to then for you to explore that area. So for this painting, we're going to do something very similar where the lighting is not. Uh, 
very realistic in a way, but lit in a more entertainment Hollywood way, where we put a lot of uh, contrasting lights. And this one I'm going to actually push it quite a bit, uh, just to show the show the uh, our students here. So I'm going to use a orange uh, lighting, which you will see uh, with some blue in the back, uh, which is a very typical um, complementary colors. It makes your scene read quite well without putting too much work in it. So right now just painting away, uh, getting all the logo value. You can see the photo underneath is basically disappearing. It's no longer used. But the values um, the photograph provided is all in the in the painting. Okay, so it's just a big time saver. Uh, before, <coughs> when we used to do this traditionally in gouache, we actually took um, you know the color palette you want to use and kind of pre-mixed it with the photo scrap next to you. So you're kind of mixing paint and trying to match that with your uh, real paint. So Photoshop just saves a ton of time because you can sample the uh, values directly. And so again, we do this because we work in production. You know, if this is a real art piece, we probably don't want to do things like that, right? You want to keep everything 100% original and all that kind of stuff. But we, that's not our job. Our job is to come up with design and showcase it in the fastest time possible. So uh, as a professional, you have to use all sorts of little tricks. You know, as long as you're not doing plagiarism or taking somebody else's painting and paint on top, <coughs> then that's fine. Because the clients don't care. The clients just want their designs to show off well. And again, in a very fast uh, manner. Speed is like uh, the key in our industry. So painting away. Um, no value at this point. It's pretty much local value. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, if a truck is white and it looks kind of white, if a table is dark, it's kind of dark. The light really hasn't come into play yet. Which we'll add uh, shortly after we put all these values in. So line drawing is still kept on top. Um, <coughs> very simple to do that. Just put it on um, multiply layer. And eventually the um, line drawing will be shut off. But this painting is quick. In real time, this took about, I think about over an hour and 20 minutes or something like that. So you, we're compressing it in half. You're watching it half an hour. Um, so it's a fairly fast painting. You know, if this is a real painting, I'll probably spend the entire day on it, about eight, nine, eight to nine hours. Uh, so you got plenty of time to figure things out. So so here I'm just making a dark little, uh, making the ground a little darker to pull the light into the upper area, right? Or in the middle, I should say, because there's these windows on the right side, as you can see, they're going to let in some light. So it's a multiply layer and we just erase out um, where we don't want things to go dark. And working in black and white is great for that, especially for something so quick like this, where you don't, you're not concentrating on painting everything super photoreal. You just want the overall feeling to get across um, very quick. And this kind of stuff we teach our students because uh, for them, they could take the time to actually bring it to a much better finish. I mean, the homeworks that our students do are much tighter than what I show in class. Is because they know the technique, uh, but what it could do is is um, expand upon that as they work. This brush I use for quick stuff, again, it's the Dodge brush, but be careful with this brush. It's very good for quick paintings. For, uh, for the other paintings you saw, for example, the, uh, the past week with the uh, tower, we don't touch this brush at all, or, or very little of it, because that's a painting. Uh, but for quick stuff like this, it works quite well, but you just have to be quite careful to keep the opacity at 10%, uh, and always erase out the areas where the light doesn't touch, and you'll see me do that uh, shortly after this. Because if you don't, you get this very bad Photoshop effect, which everything looks kind of um, blurry. You, know, you even get that a little bit here because we, we are using this brush to do the lighting. And it's not exactly correct. No, real light doesn't work the way this brush uh, makes it. And, but we understand that. However, to do a quick contrast painting, it seems to work okay. See here, we turn off the line drawing. You can see that the values are starting to work. And here I am erasing this stuff out. Erasing the uh, those areas of light shouldn't touch helps a lot to get rid of the um, blurry Photoshop feel. Because this is a this is something you c you cannot do in traditional uh, media, right? You cannot remove paint uh, in the old school days of painting. So we have to plan ahead and work from light uh, light to dark uh, with some mediums, and in other mediums you work from dark to light, right? Depending on what kind of material you're using. But in Photoshop it doesn't matter; you can go back and forth. Um, so you kind of have to work both ways. <coughs> 